Hi there, I'm Brett Lonsdale from Lightning Tools and I'm going to show you how we can use Lightning Forms inside of SharePoint 2019 in order to customize the logic and the layout of your modern SharePoint list forms. So we're going to use Lightning Forms to actually build a solution as we walk through the product and what that solution is going to be is basically an expense claim application that my employees will be able to use once a month to make an expense claim for things like flights and fuel and food and things like that whilst they're away on business trips. So what we've got here is uh, Lightning Forms installed and I've also got three lists that are going to be part of my solution. So we have first of all the expense claim list and this started off as a straightforward custom list with a few different columns defined. So as we go into that list and we'll click onto new uh, so you can see what the list entails, we've got a title field, first of all, we've then got an employee, uh, so the employee that is going to be making the claim, uh, we've got the employees manager, as well as the claim date, and then we have a location, so we can choose what part of the world they're in, and also uh, what department they are in as well. So uh, one, one of the things that actually we're going to use Lightning Forms to do is to improve this uh, so that you know we're not seeing these duplications as well. So things like sales will only show up once and as with tech support. Um, but basically they are being returned from a lookup column. So we will filter that lookup column based upon the location. And then we've also got a few other fields as well that are to do with the actual claim itself. So if there was an advance that my employees have taken over the last month and that of course will be deducted from their total expense claim and uh, will then provide them with a claim amount and they'll be able to submit this form for approval uh, to their manager or to their line manager and uh, the line manager will then be able to mark that as approved. So whilst we've got a great looking modern responsive form what we want to do is just change the layout a little bit and add some logic to that form of which we're going to be using lightning forms in order to do. And uh, one thing I want to stop them from having to do is uh, if they've got maybe four or five different items that they're claiming for, so th things like fuel and train tickets and food, uh, instead of uh, going into two separate lists, um, what we're going to do is insert another list onto this form, which is going to be the expense items. So effectively, we have like a one to many type relationship, uh, similar to what you would have with inside an InfoPath form, where you've got a repeating table for any repeating values that are going to be appearing on the form. So uh, we'll hit cancel for now and uh, let's go in and customize the form so we can do that as a designer of the site. So as long as you've got design permissions, you'll see the Lightning Forms customization dialog. We can click onto it and you'll notice here my list is made up of three different forms. We've got the new form, the edit form and the display form. So we're going to start to customize the new form. So we'll hit the customize button and that is now going to launch the design experience. So, uh, so we've got that loaded. And uh, what you can see in here, we've got uh, all the different fields, obviously, and we can simply use drag and drop to move those fields around. Uh, but we're going to do more than that. Uh, we're actually going to do some tabs and add some rich text and also insert those subforms as, as part of the layout. So since we're going to be making our form slightly wider and less deep, uh, one of the things I want to do is just jump up here to the form settings and we're going to make that initially large whereas the default size is medium. Now that doesn't affect the responsive design, we're still going to have a responsive form so even if you shrink that down to a small size uh, our form components are still going to react uh, to the appropriate size of the, uh, the window. So we've set the form settings. I then want to just add a little bit of rich text on here so uh, straightforward I can just grab the rich text control uh, under controls here, we'll select that and we can go and type some text and I'm going to add just the words expense report. And uh, we'll highlight that expense report, we'll center it and we'll just apply the simple style. So if see you could insert images and hyperlinks and that sort of thing in here. Uh, so it's useful for titles, but it's also very useful to maybe add some instructions onto your form as well so people know what's expected of them uh, with inside certain fields. Now beneath that, I'm going to uh, add a new control, which is going to be a tab control. So we'll come down here and select the tabs. So we've now got a single tab and I'm going to add another tab. So we've now got the uh, two new tabs. The first one, I'm just going to double click and in here we're going to put in claim details and in the second one 
we're going to have approval. Okay, so they're the, uh, the two tabs that we've got. Now, under the claim details tab, what we want to do is have some fields side by side so that you're not having to sort of scroll up and down all the time. Uh, so we can click onto the row configuration and change that from one column wide to two columns wide. And then I'm going to simply drag and drop the fields into that tab. So we can bring in the title tab and up in the top right, I'll have employee and manager. And over on the left, claim date, and we could have the location and the department. Now, the other ones, the payment advance, the total expenses and the claim amount, uh, as well as approved, I'm going to drop those up here under approval. And uh, of course, we could drag and drop them in as well. Uh, just to point out, you don't have to drag and drop all the time. I could just go and add them again. So you've got the total expenses and we've got the claim amount. And we've also got the approved. And uh, then I can just go through and remove these off the form. So whichever way uh, suits you, uh, you've got some flexibility there in, in how you work with the different fields that make up your form. And I'm also going to remove this attachments uh, field because I don't really need to see that one. All right, so I've got my two tabs. Uh, the next thing I want to do is also go in and add a sublist. So to add the sublist, I just hit the plus icon at the bottom. Uh, so we've seen how to add the different fields and the tab controls and so on. Uh, what we also have is the lists and the libraries that make up this site. So uh, I'm going to go through and choose the expense items. So that will get embedded on my form. I can choose which view from that list I want to display on my form. And I can also, rather than see the entire list and, and all of its content, I just want to see the related content. So for that, I'm going to need a lookup column. So I'll hit this checkbox here to use this as a sub item. And uh, then if we had a lookup column already, we could use it. If we don't, we can create one by hitting the plus icon. And that's going to go through and create this lookup column for me. So uh, we'll now have that um, created inside our expense items list. So we could also nominate different forms uh, that we want to use inside the expense items when we're creating some new expense items, or uh, we can just go with the default. And of course, you can customize those as well. Uh, and we've also got some appearance settings. So things like, do we want to have the command bar? Do we want to allow search? And do we want to show the header? So, uh, so there are all the different things that we can go and add onto that uh, sub list. So I'm happy with that. So we'll choose OK. So we've now got our sub list. The next thing I want to do is actually bring in some values from my sublist and embed them onto the main form. So we're going to use an aggregate function to take all the related claim amounts for all of these items like fuel and travel and, and what have you. And we're going to populate them into the total expense claim. So as we hover over the total expenses, I'm going to click onto this parentheses here to configure the expressions. And we'll go to the calculated uh, property and we'll click onto parentheses again and that launches this expression builder where we can go through and add some expressions calculations that sort of thing and what we're going to do is actually uh, instead of just adding two fields together or anything like that um, we're going to expand the sublists section and go and grab the claim amount and we're going to use this aggregate function of sum so double clicking onto that will put in that aggregate function for me and now we have to do is hit save so we're also going to create a calculation for the claim amount as well. And that claim amount is also going to be a simple calculation where we take the total expenses and we're going to deduct from the total expenses the payment advance. OK, so we've got our uh, expression there as well um, performing that, that calculation. OK, so, uh, so that's uh, the calculations uh, complete. Uh, the next thing I want to do is go to this department lookup. And uh, remember, we want to filter that. So what we're going to do is come up to the filter icon, add a new filter condition. And we're basically going to take the title field that belongs to the lookup uh, list. And then we're going to set that equal to an input on this form as opposed to a value or an expression. And the, uh, the form value we're after is the location. So we're basically going to get those locations of US or UK, compare them with the column inside the lookup table or lookup list, and filter on that basis in order to just return the departments that are relevant to that location. Uh, so we'll save that as well. 
And uh, optionally, we could also have a little add new item link in there too. Uh, so if we wanted to add new departments on the fly, uh, we'd be able to accomplish that. So the next thing I want to do before we complete our forms, have a look at some actions. And um, we've got two different types uh, of actions. We've got action buttons and we've also got form load actions. So on here is some floating buttons. So you notice the save and cancel button and we can go through and change those if we want to. So we can add new actions to the save functionality. Um, or we can also add action buttons up onto the command bar here and we can also do the form load actions. So I'm going to add a command bar action and the command bar action, rather than just having the save and cancel, we're going to have a submit. Uh, so we'll call that actually submit expenses. And we'll choose a relevant icon for submitting expenses. I won't spend too long looking. There we go, a little send option sounds good. So we can uh, use that, configure the actions. And the first action that I want to perform is save. So, uh, so we're going to first of all save the form. Uh, but then once I've saved the form, I'm going to let my manager know that I've made an expense claim. So, uh, so we'll do that via email. So we'll choose the send email action. And uh, in here, we've got the usual email parameters that we need to fill out. So we're going to go through and specify who the email is being sent from. And it's being sent from the current user. So uh, we'll hit that expression builder again. And under the contextual objects, we can go and look at the user and grab the user's email address. So quick double click on that. We've, uh, we've got the email address there. And we're going to send it to my manager. And I could do that either by using the manager field on the form, or I could also use my profile uh, property as well. So as I scroll down, I can grab the manager from there. Um, so depending on what you want to do, uh, I'll just grab the manager off the form. So, uh, so we've got that. And then in the subject, I'm going to have the words expense claim and build out a little body here. Dear manager, please find my expense claim. And of course, we could build a link out to the expense claim as well using the ID uh, and things like that if we wanted to. So that's the save form, send email. And uh, we're then also going to just show a little message to the uh, to the current user. So we can show a message and that message is going to be the status bubble. So, uh, so in here we'll have um, expenses submitted successfully. And here we'll have uh, just the title of expenses and this will show for five seconds and we'll make it a success status color. Uh, which will show up in green. So save, send, show message, and then finally we'll do a close form. So they're the uh, the actions behind my submit expenses, and then we're just going to add one more as well. And this is going to be approve expenses. Now we don't want our employees approving their own expenses. So what we're going to do here is go to the enabled expression and we'll click the uh, curly braces on that one and we only want this to show up if you're a member of the expense approvers SharePoint group. So uh, there's my expense approvers SharePoint group uh, so we'll save that one and we'll configure the actions for this and this is going to be setting a form field value and the form field is going to be approved. We'll set that to one and we'll add a new action called send email again. And that is going to be again from the current user, which would actually be the manager in this case. To the employee. And we'll say expenses. approved. Yay. Okay, so, uh, so we're, we're performing that and then we'll add that one last action, which again will be the close form. Okay, so we've got those, uh, those actions created now. 
And just to point out that if you wanted to uh, ever do any more, anything more than, than just these actions, uh, there's also some other things as well that you can do, like execute script and things like that. So um, you know, if you wanted to add a print button or save to PDF button or anything like that, where you're actually writing some JavaScript, uh, you could uh, perform those things. OK, so there's our, our custom buttons uh, also added to the form. So what's left is to actually test this. So we'll save and close. And now we can go in and create a new item. So as we click onto new, notice we've got that extra wide initial size of our, of our form. But if we wanted to reduce that down, it's going to respond accordingly. So uh, we still get our tabs and, and all of that sort of thing uh, going on in here. So uh, the title will be August expenses, the claim date, the location. So in here I'm in the UK. So now I only get to see the UK departments. Uh, if I choose US, I'll see the US departments and the employee. I'm just going to drop my details in there. My manager, same guy. OK, and uh, then we can go through and claim for things. So in here, we'll claim for uh, for a burger. So this isn't the food. And maybe it's $50. It was a good burger. And we could also claim for something else, like a flight. So that would come into travel. And we can put in the amount for that flight and, and so on. So these are the things I'm claiming for, which uh, have been aggregated up into our approval tab so we can see the uh, the total claim amount and, and things like that in there and uh, i could just hit save um, or i can submit my expenses uh, by clicking that button and notice also i've got that approve expenses which is currently not available to me because i am not an expense approver so in that case i won't be able to approve my own expenses so in here we can uh, we can just simply submit so that has submitted my expenses and uh, we can see there the expense claim has uh, has been made and if we go to the site contents and under the expense items i can see that there's two items there uh, so we're submitting to two different lists simultaneously okay i hope you found that useful and if you would like a private demonstration to look at if lightning forms can uh, provide a solution that you need to build uh, then uh, please let us know on help at lightningtools.com thank you